charge the damn mound powered by Tiza and High and Bloom was fired. Hey, go. That's all I'm going to know. I have a lot actually <laughs> on this. Okay. There was a whole press release. This, they told him this in the morning before the Yanks Red Sox split double header. And actually weird. Dombrowski got fired during a four gamer for the Red Sox against the Yankees in September of 2019. There's comments from the team, but then also later on, which I, I guess is the owner, right? So I'll mix in a couple here. Like while parting ways is not taken lightly, today signals a new direction for our club since principal owner John Henry. Our organization has significant expectations on the field. And while Haim's efforts in revitalizing our baseball infrastructure have helped set the stage for the future, we will today begin a search for new leadership. Everyone who knows Haim has a deep appreciation and respect for the kind of person he is. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll give you, and also it's not just Haim Bloom, it's also Brian O'Halloran, who's his GM, and he was the chief baseball officer. So Sam Kennedy, who's the president of the team, said they expected um, that they would quote, be in this thing by now. And we fell short of that. They're aiming for world championships. He, he did rule out Theo Epstein, so we could put that all to bed. He's like, that ain't happening. He ain't coming back. And he said that, quote, we have gotten glimpses of this emerging new core of the Red Sox. There are a lot of great things to build on. And then separate quote, we need leadership that can continue to build the org from the bottom up, and quote, that is focused on winning at the big league level. So... AJ, is it Haim Bloom's fault that the Red Sox were not good this year? Um, is it the payroll's fault that they're not good this year? They didn't spend any money this year. They're 11th this year. And they're the Red Sox. They're 11th in payroll this year. Uh, Haim Bloom has not been given the resources that predecessors to him have been given. They want to get under the luxury tax. I get it. But, man, it is just weird to say that they are 11th in payroll and listen, they're fighting with the Yankees, who obviously are higher than them. I actually think that Hein Bloom's done a pretty good job. If you look at some of the people he's developed, with Tristan Cassis, and and brought in Justin Turner, and he brought in some other guys on some pretty good deals, I think Hein Bloom's done all right. He definitely has. I feel like there's there's some things that he built that are going to last longer than a eight year contract to a certain player or a six year contract to another free agent, like. He's brought it. I mean, look at this roster now. Jaron Duran, they've developed him. And I know for a fact that Heim Bloom created the player development structure that's down there, which, in my opinion, if you take over a team and granted, COVID was in there too, like you're brought in, if you're not given money to spend, you're brought in to develop a minor league system. He's done that. So now you have Jaron Duran, impact player, Tristan Casas. Impact player will get some rookie of the year votes. Now you have Rafaela just came up. You have uh, Will, is it Willier? Willier? I, Abreu? Oh, yeah, Abreu. Yeah. Abreu. Abreu. They just you they have, traded for him. You have, I was there while they were, while they were working at bringing Brian, Brian Bello up to the big leagues. I was in – it was high A, double A. I was there as they were transitioning him. The player development system in the Red Sox was completely revamped. And they have all of – it's Heim Bloom's fingerprint on that because of who he hires. He doesn't necessarily hire all strategic, analytical guys. He doesn't necessarily hire all baseball guys. He's hiring people who care about the players and are incredible – communicators and people who are not willing to be like, you know what? I know what's going on. We're not going to do that. Like they're asking questions. They're very, very great. They're awesome at communicating. And so to fire him after you gave him, what did you say, AJ? The 11th payroll mm -hmm. in baseball? 11th highest payroll right now. Yeah. But, but Jonesy, I mean, the Orioles payroll is nothing. The uh, mm -hmm. Rays payroll is nothing. Mm -hmm. And I can come up with, you know, half the league that is more than half the league spending much less than him and including other teams that are not spending much. I'm just giving you a little devil's advocate. Right, but I mean, here. most, yeah, but most of those teams aren't Boston. You know, you're not the Boston Red Sox. That franchise is, especially this, uh, this new century, you got four world championships. Um, winning is, uh, winning is everything up to Boston and New York. Obviously the Yankees have had uh, Cashman for 20, 25 years. So, you know, they have not uh, parted ways with him. 
but in Boston, it's the chance about championships. If you don't win, there's always there's always going to be a scapegoat, always somebody that you point a finger at, always somebody that does something. But just just like you said, though, Kratzy is about how he revamped the whole minor league. Somebody's going to get that get that structure and be able to pseudo take credit for we obviously know who the credit really goes to but if the red sox have success in the, in the coming years it's going to be based if they're going to give the credit to the new gm um but we all know that the blueprint the foundation was laid was laid by bloom yep also don't forget Heim bloom was ordered to trade mookie Betts. that was his first job i mean that's the first thing you get plus i mean chris sale right was signed before he got there i believe yes so he was stuck with that I mean, not, I love Chris Sale. He's one of my all-time favorite people I've played with. But, you know, his contract, he hasn't been healthy for, so he's stuck with that, right? I mean, he's been kind of put behind the eight ball trying to get under the luxury tax and trying not to spend money. But he also had to trade one of the best players in baseball right away. Then he has Chris Sale's contract on there. I mean, he's kept them competitive. I think last year they won 90-something games, didn't they? I, yeah. I mean, Tre Trevor Story probably wasn't the great idea, but Bogarts walked. Uh, he did sign Devers. Uh, it, it's been like – it's kind of been a mixed bag, but I think over the long haul, if you were to give Heim Bloom a couple more years because of what Kratz said and the way they've developed guys, and that's what it's all about is developing players from your minor league system, the Red Sox are in a better place now than they were four years ago when Dabrowski was let go. To me, I would say, what has he done wrong? Like, what, well, and we don't know the – said, end. like, story that so far Stories. is not a good contract. Okay. But he also did not plan on Trevor Story blowing his elbow out. He had Tommy John surgery. True. Like, and it's not that bad of a contract. It's one forty. It's insane amount of money, but it's not two twenty five. He got that one forty. That's what I'm saying. Like, he got that one forty. If, if that's the one thing that, like, ah, we can't come up with anything else. I got another. Because because one forty when shortstops were going for, shoot. I mean, this was during the same time that Tatis was going on that was getting his contract not saying that like this is they spent as little as you were going to spend on the market for a shortstop no but also the last two trade deadlines have been weird and I, my question would be and again i'm actually i'm for all you guys i'm just giving you a little devil's advocate and what ownership's yeah. doing right now going up well because my thing is no i'm i think that he should have stayed and i think this is totally ownership's fault they're not spending as much they brought in a guy and said hey let's be the raise a little more and he's like, okay, I'll do my race thing because you don't want to let me go crazy, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm doing it, and that's a process. The Rays weren't built overnight. They were shitty for a while, even when they were kind of redoing their whole system. Yes. And they weren't going to consistent winner. Took time to find all of that. The ownership just got impatient. So let me just give you one other side, though. They had two weird trade deadlines in a row. I, I would just want to know, because Hyam's awesome to talk to behind the scenes, too. I would just want to know, like, what happened there? What was the game plan? What's going on? Because I think our show can continue to tell people that a front office, a GM, a CBO, whatever you want to call them, they operate within the purview of ownership. Everything that's being decided is in conversation with ownership. What should we do? They don't, some teams, very few though, say, here's your budget or here's the situation, go. Almost all of them though, owners say, here's what we're doing. Oh, we don't want to spend like that, right? Oh, we don't want to trade our guys right now. We want to go for it. So the last two trade deadlines were super weird for Boston. Like this trade deadline, you're going for it or not? Are you deciding based on what the trades are if you should go for it or not? That's where I think front offices are fucking up, and he's not the only one. Where San Francisco and some of these other teams, like you, either did nothing or you're shopping both sides. Like if I get a deal, then I'll go in. If I get a deal for this guy, I'll go out. Like you shouldn't. This is not a stock market. Is your team good or not? Should you improve it or should you get rid of your guys? The last two deadlines were weird. So yeah. I would want to know more about that. And I, I, I'm not saying that's the reason, but that's the reason. That's part of what they're going to put out there. I'm telling you that. You're going to see the articles over the next few right. days. They're going to go, oh, they were blaming those weird Scott, trade deadlines. Let me ask you this question. Yeah. White Sox have the, I think it was the seventh. You're not allowed fifth, to talk about them. No, I'm just, this is a, this is a good thing. Seventh or fifth highest payroll this year, 197 million, whatever. It was higher than the Red Sox, okay? Whose future would you rather have? Right now, looking at the two teams organizationally wide, the White Sox or the Red Sox? It's not close. Red Sox. Okay. Both of them just changed their general managers. It will definitely – it's so ironic that they changed them almost the exact same time. It'll be like there's two trajectories. Let's see what happens. I, yeah, I mean, I'm One really... thing to keep in mind, though, AL Central sucks. I don't think it'll ever be dominant. Or not. That's, that's too much. 
it's, it, it doesn't look good right now. The AL East is a freaking gauntlet, especially when you have the two non-spenders right now in their peak. So just keep it. Just it's tough. The competition is fierce. Boston's not a bad team. Their pitching should be better. It's hard, dude. They're over five hundred. They're over yes. five hundred. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this it's not, this like is not a awful. bad ball club, but it's not good enough to be a playoff team this year. It's just how it is. We we need to we need to hear more inner workings of these discussions. Like the guy, he first year he fires Mookie Betts, trades him over to L.A. Then he essentially gets. What he got for him, he got Connor Wong and Verdugo. That's it. And now Jeter, down, he down. went to yeah. well, no, no. There's like there's four guys in right, the trade, right, but, but guys who are yeah. actually who's playing, the contributor. Yeah. Playing. Yeah. That's a tough trade. They they had they were dealing him. They, they had to insane. deal him. He yeah. had to deal him. How many of those yeah. trades work out for both teams? Look how many times those superstar guys are traded and they get four or five guys back. It is very rare that a guy coming back is a guy to replace. I mean, even four of them combined, it never, it almost never works out. No. I mean, look at the, look at the Nationals for, for Soto. I mean, look at the, all these guys. I mean, I mean, CJ Abrams is a nice player. You know, McKenzie Gore is okay, right? But they're not making up for Juan Soto leaving. It just doesn't happen. And, and Heim Bloom was put in that position because you can make this trade, right? You, and so we're going to put it on you, Heim. We bring you in, and that's the first order of business. Like, dude, imagine if they would have kept Mookie Betts. And spent on him what they maybe where they'd be right now. You just don't know. I mean, you know, Yoshida's there. He had a great start. He's kind of fallen off the second half. Did they overpay for him? I mean, these are all questions that, that we'll find out over the long haul, right? But I mean, Hyde was put in a tough spot from the get-go. Oh, by the way, trade away one of the best players, not only of Red Sox history, but could be go down as a Hall of Fame player. Oh, yeah, get rid of him. Why? Because we don't want to spend the money. All right. But that's why owners pay front office people to take the hits for them. That's just the way the business yeah, works. So, but yeah, let's see what happens. I think we're all on the same page here. I mean, dude definitely didn't get full leeway to build the thing like he wanted to. And there were a lot of positive signs and ownership just said, oops, we made some mistakes on our front and you're taking the hit for it. Someone's got to do it. So we'll see what happens. He gone. He gone. Also, unfortunately got to um, say that about Scherzer, but we'll talk more about him later. Um, just want to say this charge the mound seg is powered by Teza. Use the discount code FAL F O U L for 20% off your first order at TezaEnergy.com.